In this video, I'm gonna be sharing a basic, really simple compost tea recipe that you can use to get better brews. And I'm gonna use this to test someone's compost that they've sent to me. So let's get on with it. Now, for those who don't know what compost tea is, I suggest you go and have a look at this video. I'll leave a link in the description below to it where I give a really in-depth insight into what compost tea is. But if you don't have the stomach to sit through quite a long video and a lot of technical information, compost tea is basically a process where you take some ideally great quality compost, you solubilize it, you mix it in with water, and then you add different foods, stimulants to that mix and aerate it. And you add the oxygen because as these organisms multiply up, it keeps up with the biological oxygen demand. So it allows your population of bacteria, fungi, protozoa to continuously grow over a period of time. And then that mixture you can apply on your plants and crops. Now to do all of that, you need a thing called a brewer. And I made another video about that, which is this one here. I'll leave a link to that below. Basically, a brewer is a set of apparatus that enable that mixing of all of those ingredients together and the supply of oxygen. And in that video, I show how to make a simple lifter, kind of extractor type brewer. I'm not saying it's the best, but it's a really great starting point for those interested in brewing. But I'm not going to be using that particular brewer today. I'm gonna to be using another small kind of bucket brewer that we've used in the laboratory to do different trials in the past. And let's have a look at what I did. So basically I took a bucket, filled it with 20 litres of water, measured out 5% by volume compost, half a percent of organic molasses and half a percent of humic acid. That's the recipe that we chose. Again, I'm not saying this is the best recipe that exists. However, this is a recipe which we've done multiple trials on in the laboratory and found gave the most consistent results. And that was because we were looking for a really basic uh, kind of recipe for making compost tea that would give maximum concentrations over and over again. So this isn't just something I've plucked out the air and come up with. This actual recipe that I'm sharing is something that we've worked very hard and done lots of tests on. In fact, there's a whole paper that sits behind it on the research that we did. If you're interested in obtaining that, let me know in the comments and perhaps it's something that I'll share through my website. So that is the setup uh, that we did. Um, just a couple of points to note on this. As I mentioned in my super duper, all singing, all dancing, technical long guide to compost tea, the most important aspect of this whole process is the quality of the compost. And that's because the resultant mixture that you get more often than not is an amplification of those characteristics. So it really pays to have a great compost to start with. So to that end, we analyzed the compost before setting this brew up to have a look at the results. And this is the characteristics. This is what the compost that we use looks like, biologically speaking. So I've got the results here and this is a green compost. I don't know quite what that means, but maybe I'll follow up with the uh, guy that sent it to me. Um, I'll put the results on the screen so you can see what I'm looking at, but basically it has a great moisture content and there are lots and lots of bacteria, lots and lots of fungi, loads of protozoa, loads of nematodes. I have noted, however, um, that the activity, so the activity of the bacteria, the activity of the fungi seems to be a little bit on the low side given that it has pretty good total numbers of bacteria and total numbers of fungi. So we'll see how that plays out at the end when we compare start and finish 
brew concentrations. Now, it's worth just mentioning a couple more points. One is that we were using tap water and where we live is incredibly calcareous. And also they put a lot of chlorine in the water to keep it clean. And so we have to aerate the bucket brewer for quite some time before we can add any of the mixtures, just to make sure that all of that has gassed off. And the fact that the water is the result of um, kind of water filtering through the hills that we're on, which are chalky hills, it means that it does have a high pH as well. So that's worth a consideration if you are regularly brewing, test your water, understand the water supply that you're using because that can also influence the characteristics of the brew that you end up with. So just on the biostimulants, the foods that I use, the humic acid is one of the better types that I've found. It's produced from um, much more sympathetic natural processes and that means that it has a much lower pH. So that's really important when we're putting this into a bucket of water that already has a high pH. That means that it will buffer to some degree um, the water pH levels and that means that, that the fungal populations, the spores that we're looking to reproduce, the hyphal strands that if we give it long enough, are hopefully going to develop in the brew. It means that fungi has the best possible chance of actually multiplying. So the other ingredient, of course, is molasses. And we elected to do our trials with an organic form of molasses, actually just a simple product that we bought from a local store. And that's because in theory, the organic product is not going to contain those harmful compounds or traces of chemicals that could impair, hinder the growth of our microbes in the brew. So with everything set up, we left this bucket brewer to run for approximately 24 hours before we then took a sample from it, as we would do with soil or other biological liquids in the lab. We took a sample and then we put it under the microscope to analyze. So I have the results here, which I will also put on the screen and share with you. Uh, basically what I have noticed looking at the numbers at the start compared to the numbers at the end is there have been some increases, um, not necessarily everywhere I would have thought. The active bacteria, seems to have increased by around fivefold ish the total bacteria however so that's all the active and also inactive bacteria has increased quite substantially in terms of micrograms per milliliter um, the active fungi however has decreased but the total fungi so the concentrations in micrograms per liter uh, per milliliter have increased by oh goodness me what's this around seven and a half almost eight times so it has definitely worked this brew uh, by worked we mean it has amplified up some of the concentrations of bacteria and fungi across the totals this is definitely evident the numbers are pretty huge uh, this is sort of by a factor of just over 10 however the activity is a little bit disappointing in the case of fungi so what can we take from this whole process well the purpose of this test was not to validate the recipe that uh, we used for it we've already done some background work on that and we found that it worked over and over again on the material that we use in the context that it was applied. However, we were testing this particular person's compost to see if we could achieve some good results from that. And I think we could, but they were quite limited, especially around the active fungi fraction. And it's the active bacteria, the active fungi that when you're brewing a compost tea, you're particularly interested in so the active fungi might be suboptimal probably not really where we want it to be 
So overall, the key takeaway, I think, from this whole experiment is, as usual, there isn't a one-size-fits-all. One recipe will not necessarily work for a different compost. And so what this means to you is that it is, unfortunately, a process of trial and error. You're going to have to test out different concoctions, different recipes, uh, different biostimulants and foods dependent on the compost material that you're using. And that is going to take a little bit of trial and error. Now, this whole process was really good fun. It's so important, I think, to regularly be in check with the quality of your brew, if you're brewing regularly. And certainly, if it's something you're looking to get into, that first step, analysing your compost before you do anything else, is really, really important. So, what did you think of the results? Was that what you were expecting? Um, part of the reason I confess to doing this is just to kind of get a little bit of momentum and use this as a base for comparison. So I've already had some suggestions for mixes to try. I know that some of you are very keen on getting more information on different recipes for compost tea. So I'd love to hear from you what sort of ingredients you perhaps would like testing. Then I can have a mull about that and perhaps include them in a future video. So let me know in the comments below. But for now, that wraps this video up. Until the next one, I'll see you soon.